Yo, what's up guys, Junior here. It's day 95 of NoFap. This is a super special video. I'm going to be going over Isaiah chapter 53. It's in the Book of Mormon uh, chapter 14 of Mosiah. And Isaiah 53 is one of the chapters in the Old Testament that testifies most plainly and clearly about Jesus Christ. Um, so let's start with the prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for helping me to go another day sober. I thank you for your word, and I pray that you can help us feel the Holy Spirit as I go over Isaiah 53, that you can help us to feel the truthfulness of these words and help us to grow closer to your son, Jesus Christ. I pray that you can help all of us overcome our temptations as they come, and I say this humbly in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, so let's let's get started. It says... Yea, even doth not Isaiah say, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we shall desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquities of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, because he had done no evil, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sins of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Wow. So... This is a more or less short chapter of Isaiah, um, but it's so good. It's for sure one of my favorite chapters. I love how this chapter really speaks to me that Isaiah was a prophet of God, um, is a prophet of the Lord, um, because he speaks so clearly like, I think he was, you know, 600 or 700 years before Christ was born, and he's saying these things, and it almost seems like, he was right there next to Jesus Christ uh, when he was walking the earth. Like, it seems to me that he actually like saw Jesus Christ. So I'm gonna break this down and talk about what I like about it. The first scripture, the first, the first verse is one of my favorite. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? I love this because, you know, we can read the Bible. Uh, we can listen to the prophets, but like, do we believe what they're saying? Who hath believed our report? And as Christians, we're supposed to be witnesses. So we all are supposed to be witnesses of Jesus Christ. And it's up to the people if they want to believe us or not. Um, the next line that I really like, I like this whole thing, but I can't obviously talk about the whole thing in a video because that would be too long. Um, verse 3, it says, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. 
a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. I think that's one of the reasons why um, it's kind of, you know, people think like, oh, Jesus Christ is your Lord. He's, he's God. And like, yeah, he is. But I think, I think people in their mind, they probably think God is like, you know, doesn't suffer. He's just super powerful and he wouldn't suffer and he, and he's not going to be sad and he's just, you know, just super happy and everything goes well for him. But in reality, Jesus Christ, you know, that's what made him God. He suffered through all those things, humbly suffered. And he did the will of the Father. And, you know, there's so many times, like, people just stabbed Jesus Christ in the back. Like, obviously, with um, Judas Iscariot, but also with Peter, like, saying, like, he didn't know him and all this stuff. And he denied Jesus Christ, even though Jesus Christ, you know, did all these things for him. So, I, I love Jesus Christ. One reason why I love Jesus Christ is because... um. You know, when I feel sad, when I feel rejected, when I feel like a bunch of sorrow, that just kind of makes me feel like I'm not alone, like Jesus Christ is there with me. Uh, it says, the next one, it says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. That just gives me so much joy because, like, when we have these cares of the world, we could just lay it upon the feet of Jesus Christ and he'll take it. Um... Oh, verse 5. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our, for our iniquities. Okay, so let me just repeat that slowly. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. I love this so much. This is one of the most powerful verses in the Holy Scriptures. I love it because... When I have a, a temptation to sin, sometimes I think, do I want Jesus Christ to suffer more? Do I want to contribute more? Because, you know, I've already helped them. To, I, I've already caused so much suffering for Jesus Christ. Do I want to just add upon that? You know, it's like when Jesus Christ was walking to the to the place where he was going to be crucified they literally had like whips and on the ends of the whips they had like pieces of metal and glass and all this stuff and they were just whipping him on the back and sometimes that whip would get stuck on his skin and he would just they just pull it out and just i just don't it just i just don't want to cause him to suffer anymore like You know, because we know that Jesus Christ died for our sins, so I just don't want to okay, just sin, just to sin, just to be like, oh, Jesus Christ suffered for my sins, he'll forgive me, and then sin. You know, I've done that plenty of times, but I don't want to do that anymore. Um, and verse 6, it says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquities of us all. That first part, all we like sheep have gone astray. Like, we've all gone astray. There's no one who's been, who's lived the perfect life besides Jesus Christ. So we've all gone astray. Uh, but the last part of that verse gives me so much hope. It says, the hope, the, the Lord hath laid on him the iniquities of us all. So my shortcomings, my iniquities, my transgressions, Jesus Christ took it upon himself because Jesus Christ saw, okay, Ramon, Ramon wants to go back to our Heavenly Father. I'm going to help him go back. I'm going to lay upon me all of Ramon's shortcomings, all of his sins. I'm going to take that upon myself because Ramon can't do it by himself. So that makes me so happy because like in that sense, like Jesus Christ is my best friend. He's my best friend. Um, this next verse, I really don't care if this video goes long. I'm just going to like try to go um, through everything on this. Uh, this next verse says, He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. 
He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her, he, her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. I feel like this is just literally, this doesn't feel like Old Testament to me. This feels like New Testament. This is so crazy to me. Like, um, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. I love this because Jesus Christ preached the gospel on the street. He was teaching people about the gospel, right? But when it came to his crucifixion and when it came to the sufferings, um, it came to a certain point where he just didn't say anything. Like, he just didn't respond to people. And sometimes that's what we have to do. Sometimes when people are asking us questions, because you can ask a question with sincere intent, and then you can ask a question to try to make someone feel dumb or to try to like belittle someone. And sometimes the best answer when somebody says something slick or just gets on your mind, just just don't say anything, you know. Um, who shall declare his generation? I love this because like we all have a generation, like um, our fathers and our fathers' fathers and our fathers' 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 fathers', fathers, 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 fathers and we all go back to Adam. Um, verse nine it says. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no evil. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. That is Jesus Christ. He had done no evil. Jesus Christ never once sinned. Uh, he was tempted in all points, but he never once sinned. There was never any deceit in his mouth. First. 10 this one kind of like blew my mind when i first like came across it yet it pleased the lord to bruise him wow it pleased the lord to bruise him so through all that you know through all that suffering that that he endured it pleased the Lord to bruise him. It pleased the Lord that Jesus Christ died on the cross. God was happy that Jesus Christ died on the cross. Even though, you know, when we have children, obviously we don't want to see our children get hurt. You know, so less that, that is just so gruesome, so agonizing. So just to see your son on the cross but it pleased the Lord to bruise him because he knows that the only way that we can make it back to heaven, that we can make it to God's presence is through Jesus Christ. So even though it was so hard to watch, um, it, it made it so that, you know, Jesus Christ completed his work. He said, it is finished. Like, he did it for us. If he wouldn't have died on the cross, like, what if Jesus Christ would have listened to Peter and would have been, okay, yeah, like, maybe I shouldn't go up in there. Like, I'm sure that if Jesus Christ would have denied what he said, he wouldn't have been on the cross. But no, he came to the earth to be a servant. He came to die for you and for me. And he suffered. He suffered it and... It wasn't like he's like, oh, okay, I'm going to die on the cross today. Like, no, it wasn't like, oh, cool, like, let me just do this, you know, like, no, it was hard for him. Like, he even asked God, you know, if, you know, I'm paraphrasing, but if it be his will, let this cup pass from him. But if not, not mine will, but thine will be done. So it wasn't like he's like, okay, I'm gonna die on the cross for you guys. Like, this is cool. No, he was like, he was nervous. He was like, cause if you think about it, if we all say life's not fair, life's not fair. You think Jesus Christ dying on the cross is fair? Someone who never sinned once, he never lied once. Like, he never did one thing wrong, yet he had to suffer for all of our sins 
billions of people's sins, you know, people before him, people during his time, people in the future, people who still are not even born yet right now, he had to suffer for their sins. Do you think that's fair? It wasn't easy. That's why God, that's why Jesus Christ is God, because it wasn't easy. But I love this it says, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. Um, verse 11, he shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear their iniquities. And verse 12, the second part, it says, He hath poured out his soul unto death, and he, had, he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sins of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. So, you know, we're all sinners, we're all transgressors, we all, I mean, we're trying to do better. Um, but we need we need Jesus Christ's atonement to to be able to go back to to our heavenly Father. Um, sorry, this is a long video, guys, but I love this chapter. I love Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is in the Old Testament, plain and clear, as you guys uh, hopefully notice in this chapter. I just you know for. I just want you guys to simply, if you get a temptation to do something bad, especially pornography, watch pornography, just think about Jesus Christ's suffering on the cross. Uh, just think about the love that Jesus Christ has for you and hopefully that will be enough. Hopefully you can have the courage to allow that to be enough because if you allow that to be enough that is enough but if you don't allow that to be enough if you're not satisfied with with that then i i hate to say it but there's really no hope for you um <laughs> because the only way the only way to be saved is through repentance and faith on the lord jesus christ um it might seem harsh if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, but I say it because I love you. And I love the scriptures. I love Jesus Christ. I love his word. I love the Bible. I love the Book of Mormon. I love the prophets. Um, I also love you guys. Uh, I hope that we can overcome this temptation. Uh, hope, overcome all of our temptations. And that we can be more like Jesus Christ. I'm sorry for the long video again, guys, but um, I hope you guys found something useful in it, and have a great week. Peace.